Hey guys, uh, welcome to our AMA with Swiss Wall. So we've got Julian from Stake Dow, myself, and Alex from Swiss Wall, and we'll, um, we'll we'll start with a normal format, you know, introduction to both of the communities, and then we'll take some of the questions you guys have been sharing. So um, yeah, without further ado, I'll let I'll let the guys introduce themselves, and we'll we'll kick off. Uh, yeah, hey guys, I'm uh, I'm Julian from uh, from Stake Dow. Uh, so. I've been in uh, in the space for for quite some times, and um, uh, we started working on StakeDAO about uh, like four or five months ago. And StakeDAO is a decentralized exchange. We provide uh, the entire workflow from buying assets, selling assets, finding the best quote for for your swap, and also providing strategies uh, for for users. So strategies that can provide the best API on the ecosystem. So. Uh, like USD, Euro, Dollars, um, uh, BTC, and, and ETH. And we're also building like some advanced features such as options and futures. Uh, you can sign, um, think of uh, StakeDAO as a decentralized exchange, but using the same kind of user experience that you will find in a centralized exchange. Yeah, amazing. Um, and Alex? Hello, hello, everybody. Before I introduce myself, I'd like to send all my love to Ivas, Julianas, Swiss Board deal, Glavin. Yeah, seriously, it's amazing to always have such, you know, loyal and the family always joining us on this crazy adventure. My name is Alex Fazel. I'm the Chief Partnership Officer at Swiss Borg. Swiss Borg is technically a crypto wealth management ecosystem that is built by the community, with the community, and for the community. And uh, it's it's a pleasure to be here with Stake DL, such an awesome team, and Julien Boutoulou and everyone else to to really help move this space forward. Well, you guys, you guys are awesome. So it's a, it's a great pleasure to work with you and uh, and and, and uh, supporting this uh, partnership. The pleasure is all ours, Julien. An absolute pleasure. Exactly. Yeah. Just just echo those thoughts. So I think um, I think we can get where started. You know, both the communities are probably quite familiar with uh, the protocols now. So if we get into some of the questions, the the first one that we have is structured around. How to how to marry the two communities together and and what Stake DAO and Swissborg plan to plan to do on the community front? Maybe Alex, you wanna you wanna kick off with that one and and we can just jump in and have a conversation around that. Yeah, absolutely. So this partnership makes all the sense in the world, right? It's kind of like Swissborg has become this big brother, and which is which is great. We went from thirty five employees all the way to close to two hundred employees. And it's a lot more CFI oriented, although we do work a lot in DeFi. And I think, you know, it's kind of this situation, this relationship of kind of a big brother who's getting a little bit, you know, fatter and slower <laughs> that needs a little bit of needs, needs a little bit of support from a younger brother, you know, that is, uh, you know, has has more space, you know, more flexibility, et cetera, et cetera. Because, you know, Swissborg, obviously, in the beginning, the whole idea was really to connect the off-chain and on-chain worlds. That was the ultimate vision, right? So it's really like the perfect fit in terms of Legos because we're trying to help the average person who's not tech savvy, who just doesn't have time to get access to DeFi and all these cool platforms of the world of Finance 2.0 and make it accessible really to everyone without any technical skill, without having to be a whale, et cetera, et cetera. And then on the other hand, you have, you know, our little brother, Stake DO, which is, you know, extremely, you know, it's, it's a, all the guys here, including Julien, they have incredible engineering skills and they're always there looking at the latest, you know, innovations, always there, you know, trying to find optimal solutions specifically in DeFi, right? Not having to play with the banking partners and the centralized things and stuff like that. So to me, it's it's really that relationship of a big brother, little brother, uh, and it's just the perfect fit, the perfect narrative. Good, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, it's a good, um, I think it's a good recap of the situation and the relationship that we have, uh, we have together. Like uh, using you guys, your experience of, uh, yeah, pretty big, uh, being pretty big in the market, and for us, having the flexibility of making sure that we bring the best tools and best uh, best technology, so you guys can use it and provide it for your users. And also on our side, we can uh, we can also like learn from uh, from your experience. Yeah, one hundred percent. I love the love the fact that you guys refer to it as like big brother, little brother. It's definitely growing the ecosystem through family. And and a good point is the alignment in terms of morals and values. So uh, I think one of the main things that we've had at Stake DAO. 
uh, and Julianne, I think you've been you've been propagating this for a while, um, is the influx of new users into DeFi. And one of the things that Swiss Sport does really well is, you know, make it simple and, and let people learn about the future. And it's a big part about what Stake DAO tries to do, especially through the academy. Um, yeah. So I wonder, maybe Julian, you can you can expand on how Stake DAO is, is aimed at expanding DeFi to the world, and uh, naturally how Swiss Borg works with that. Um, yeah, sure. I mean, um, um, our philosophy and um, in Stake DAO, if you if you basically compare to uh, any product that uh, uh, is available on the market of DeFi, it's usually very difficult for people to understand what's going on and the UX, the user experience, the user uh, interface is not really, uh, it's not really great, um, and it's a lot of different numbers. And so it's, it's, you can get easily uh, lost in a, um, in a DeFi translations. And what, what we try to do in in State DAO is trying to provide uh, uh, the best user experience, the best user interface for people to easily get into DeFi, and not necessarily. To try to have a huge understanding at the beginning of what is DeFi and, and how to use it. So we provide tools to people where we uh, personally, at least like really solid and, uh, and not non-risky uh, products. So then we make those different integration. For example, in, in State DAO, you don't need a Web3 wallet in order to get into DeFi, where most of the application in DeFi you require like this kind of MetaMask and then different things. Well, here we provide you a very really easy logging. And then also like for people that want to swap assets, instead of trying to understand how DeFi, those different products works, we just provide you the best quotes in the market and that's it. And then we do the same on the, on, on, the, on, the, on the strategies. We don't provide many different strategies, but the one that we provide, we can guarantee and we can almost promise you that it will be the best APY in the market. And this is like what we do. Every single piece that we provide and we build is built in such a way that we try to be the best, and that's it. And that's why, for me and for us I, as a team, it's really great to partner with SwissBot because those guys, you guys, have been providing like amazing experience for user. And the 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 if you look at the statistics, how you've been growing over the past uh, couple of months, this is pretty impressive. So, yeah, it's like how can we, as like he said, a little brother, someone that is really focused on the technical uh, expertise and trying to build uh, smart contract DeFi products that will fit the need of anyone and also the business side, how we can provide this expertise to people that have been there for quite some time. And this is what we uh, are really focused on. So for example, we'll be chatting in a Telegram group, trying to understand the need of both sides and say, okay, cool, you guys have this kind of assets or you have this kind of uh, problems how can we fix it and then build it very fast and ship it? And uh, I think it's more like, yeah, I mean, this really close relationship and we'll make the boss project uh, even bigger, uh, bigger projects in a, in a short and medium term. Yeah, amazing. I think you make some, some really good points there. Just to, just to recap a little bit. So I think the, the symbiosis really works in terms of staked out, looking at optimizing the yield and providing a safe strategies for users from SwissBorg to get access into the DeFi yield. And, and maybe Alex, you can, can talk a little bit more in, in the short to medium term, what that will mean for your, your community and well, our community now, and, and how the, the people who interact with SwissBorg on a daily basis will be impacted by this partnership. Yeah, of course. So for us, like I was saying earlier, you know, as we evolved with SwissBorg, obviously the biggest risk, we, our goal is to be long-term and the most sustainable application in the EU, right? That's the ultimate goal. We want, to, we want to be the default app. And by the way things are looking, I think we will really reach that specific goal because you know the EU market hasn't really been captured. Now, it used to be Coinbase back in the days, but since they've done an IPO, they're kind of scaling back. So there's no true dominant player, maybe Kraken perhaps, but it's an exchange. So it's not exactly a competitor of ours because we aggregate, right? We offer best execution to the community when you buy, when you sell, connecting to four exchanges, soon to be five. That's what we're offering directly with uh, a bank account, no need for MetaMask, no need for bridges, no need for nothing, right? It's really, we have participants in our DeFi pool that are above 80 years old. I talked about this lady the other day, a Swiss lady, she's 82 years old and she's contributing to DeFi. She's earning, she's earning yields through the DeFi farms 
through which what, what we believe to be, you know, one of the best risk return strategies in DeFi. And um, that is what really matters to us. That's what gets us up. And what I see, particularly in terms of the mid to long term partnership with Takedio, there's so many ways of, of working with each other. Like, obviously, if the market goes sideways or even if we have a bearish market, we all know that yields go down. Right. But we want to stay competitive. And even though we do have, you know, the technological team, you know, scanning smart contracts, looking at code on GitHub, doing all the due diligence to make sure that we choose the right platforms. Then we have the financial team going through an extra layer due diligence for liquidity, et cetera, et cetera. Even though we have procedures in place and we have a DeFi team. It's not enough, right? You always need help. You always need a coach. You always need advisors, you know, to give you new perspectives. And I think Julien, someone who is a part of the Curve founding team, I mean, just on Curve itself, there's some strategies that can be optimized or some vaults that can be built. And then secondly, um, this is not just about optimizing strategies. It's also about saving in terms of expenses, right? How do you go from one bridge to the other, from Polygon to ETH, et cetera, from Bitcoin to wrap Bitcoin? With, with without paying you know enormous fees what are the ways to optimize fees and as you cut down on fees then you can also share that extra juice with the community and then another thing that another angle that stake Dio does really well is it's not just farming but it's also validator nodes so you also earn apy through validator nodes and that is also a direction that we're really interested in and we will be offering hopefully some of these yields further down the line in case we realize that farms are just losing too much of its juice then perhaps nice. you know, through some, uh, the, the support some of alpha. Stigio. Some alpha. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. So they're, like they're more, uh, they're more like market, uh, they're more, there's more of a negative correlation to the market, right? There's, you don't have the same systematic risk when you're going through validator nodes. So there's yeah. so, so many venues that we could use. Um, again, you know, little brother help his kind of chubby brother now that is, needs to, to run back <laughs> on the track. <laughs> <laughs> but also like also like I mean thinking about validators, uh, you can actually stake into a validator and and hopefully in a in a in a, in a medium or long term plan is to have liquid staking. So then using the representation of your stake into a validator to then use it as uh, as a collateral to either borrow capital or invest in different other strategies. So this is also something that we could build. Like for example, you stake into a validator. And then at the same time, the tokens that you get from staking into a valider, we can build a strategy that will do something on the lending market or, or, or auto market maker. And this is where things are start, uh, get really uh, uh, interesting because like you basically build, it's like legal plug and play, different tools for providing the best uh, products to the, to the users. You mentioned something that's also really good is, you know, there are some safe strategies by using options, right? That, that's another example, way to get yeah. to get, get extra something, juice and yeah yeah we'll we'll uh, start uh, releasing uh, a few different things on the option side uh, this week normally or uh, maybe uh, next week but yeah this is like we we're getting started inside so ideally what we would like to offer for you for like for Swissburg as well is a, a product that will help people to either hedge like against uh, different things or leverage so you can at the end. Um, uh, people could uh, either short, long, different uh, different strategies, or at the same time hedge or leverage themselves against the market, or because the market is pumping or is actually going down, and we can actually build different things. Yeah, nice. Some uh, some some alpha there. Um, so, I mean, just to just to take some questions from the chat, I think there's there's two questions. So one is about where you can see, regardless of regulation. Swissborg and State DAO working together for five years B. So that's that's one. And I guess um, another one which we can combine with that is one in the chat which asks about offering the State DAO engine on um, on Swissborg. So at the moment there's uh, a few exchanges connected, and you mentioned you know there's soon to be a fifth one. Um, so in the kind of five year timeline, where do you see it progressing in terms of strategies, trading exchanges? Um, and, and even uh, in terms of different tokens? I think that's a really good question, by the way. Uh, a shout out to Paul74 for asking such a good question. And, you know, if we looked at this a, a year ago and you looked at Uniswap, for instance, right, we would have never believed that the technology would scale as fast as it did today. And even last year, like early last year, there are a lot of people who were trying to position themselves as an aggregator with both centralized or sex exchanges and DEX exchanges. 
And nowadays, you know, with all the upgrades and how fast Uniswap is moving, it is possible. It is something that we've been looking into. It is something that we're really interested in because ultimately, this is the this is why the stake DO and Swiss Borg partnership is so powerful because it's going to be eventually in two to three years, it's going to be DeFi as the back end, as the infrastructure of the entire financial markets, right? And then you're going to have the regulated, the, the ones who comply with local governments will be more of the front end, right? And I really believe that's the way things are going to work out. And that's another reason why the, this partnership is so promising. But to answer your question, Paul, absolutely. We are looking into decentralized exchanges to add them in our aggregation for best execution. And it's something that we're following very, very carefully because it makes all the sense in the world. Yeah, that's uh, it's super exciting to hear, and I'm sure for for the people in the chat as well to to see how how the two worlds almost can come together. Um, so, uh, Julian, one of the things that Stake DAO has recently launched, well, the NFTs have been exposed for a while, but now we're we're looking into deploying some of the powers. And uh, a question from the chat from uh, Muchcrypt is how those NFTs will work with regards to future partnerships or even this partnership? It's a good question. It's something that we've been working over uh, the past few weeks is it's a, it's something even bigger. It's like, how can we bring uh, gamification of the platform to, to the next level? And one of the tools that we can do among many different tools, such as peripherals or uh, like different level of, of, uh, of, of programs is the NFT. Uh, the NFT mechanism is is great because it's an on-chain product that if people use it and stake it inside the platform, then they can unlock different features. They can also boost their yield. They can, uh, uh, for example, we could subsidize their gas cost, or they can really um, they can have access to strategies or features that are not accessible to normal retail players. Um, so NFTs are and they can be seen as, uh, as a VIP pass. And these VIP pass can be applied to many different things, but also on the partnerships way, for example, we could easily see uh, SwissBorg uh, using some of the stake DAO NFT to unlock specific features or to also like get an extra, uh, an extra boost on a, on, a different, on a different strategy that uh, SwissBorg is providing. For example, the Euro or the USD or, or the BDC strategies, for example, like a, an increase of the yield and all the different things. Yeah, this is something that we, we, we are looking into. Or maybe like also like some, some, some prices or like different things. I think that um, when you have a gamification on top and a, a way to monitor the entire activity of a specific uh, uh, segment, like, like uh, for example, the entire activity of the DAO, then you can build so many great things on top of it. And what we want using this partnership is to also test some new features so she's about to benefit in avant-première uh, those different products. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that's very exciting for people to hear, especially who've been, you know, almost coveting these NFTs for a while. So we've got a few few collectors and, and of course there's different powers and stuff. As you say, a VIP pass, but even the the wider gamification of the platform. Alex, I was wondering on, on Swissball if you already have some thoughts on gamification and, and how that works on your app, perhaps. Absolutely. So gamification is something that is really close to my brother's heart. So for those who don't know, my brother is Cyrus Bazell. He's the co-founder and CEO of Swissborg. He's the, the lovely person who got me into this beautiful space. But, you know, my brother mentioned one thing one day to me, which is we have to gamify everything. It really, in the future, investing has to be fun. It has to be easy because Swissborg is more of an automation type thing. It's anti-DIY, right? Besides cashing out or depositing your money. We really want everything to be fully automated and passive for everyone to be able to enjoy and use. But further gamification, there are many ideas that are being thrown around and gamif gamifying investing is, is the key to everything, right? Like my brother said one day, you know, even in the most darkest gloomy places, you know, and, and when we talk about, you know, cancerologists or we talk about cancer hospitals for children, you know, they this is definitely a very intense and, and, and really painful place to be in, but they always try to make things fun. You know, they always try to bring in clowns and balloons. They try to bring in dogs for kids to pet. They try to organize games. So if you can try to add a little bit of fun into worlds as, as tough as that, why can't you make investing fun? 
And I think that is really something that that touched my heart when my brother said that. And we're definitely looking at not just gamifying, but making it educational and gamify it. So edutainment, as we say, right? And there are many ways to do that, which, of course, we will hopefully be able to share with the community further down the line. But it is definitely one of those ways where, you know, a company like us, an app like us can really differentiate ourselves and create, you know, a new market. So um, thanks for asking such a great question. It was a very great, very great world, a uh, bunch of, uh, uh, yeah. I, I think like make investment fun, definitely also something that we will be working on. I mean, that's what we are like the, the sanctuary, we have the palace, we have like this kind of elephant, we have this crew. And uh, so, so, now, so now it's not only like we are Swiss blocks, but also like we are all, uh, so it's, a, it's, a, it's a big family, it's a big herd. And uh, yeah, I really like the words that you just said, because it makes a lot of sense. And uh, that's also something that we really focus on. Yeah, it's um, it's amazing. Now, actually, now we've uh, we've been dropping the alpha, so we've got a few uh, hot questions coming in. So from from Alex, um, for for both of you or whoever wants to take it, what's your thoughts on the recent SEC statement on Bitcoin and how that will affect Swissboard, the yield it offers, and of course DeFi? Yeah, it's you know the legal and political. The the, the essence is political issues, right? The legal aspect is something that we've been talking about for a while, you know, with my brother telling the community, hey, guys, I know it's super cool now. It's party time in the DeFi world. But we all know that already these legal crackdowns and restrictions have been coming into play. We, t- we heard Biden, the SEC and multiple people, you know, trying even the New York district attorney trying to crack down on some crypto companies. So there will be some bumps down the road. I do not think, you know, it will happen very, very soon. You know, when politicians talk about something, it takes years to be put into place, right? It's not going to happen right away, like as of next year. It's very bureaucratic, so it will take some time. But for us, you know, in in terms of yields, as long as companies are licensed and regulated and really doing like, like what we are, right? We're focusing on one geographic zone, which is the EU and some of the neighboring countries, and we're we're just doing it the right way, you know, we're trying to be ethical, we're trying to be compliant and make sure that we're we're in touch with all these regulators and jurisdictions so that we can really keep a positive relationship and always aim for that long-term sustainable view. So I think it, that's really, that's the name of the game for, you know, the next years to come. Uh, I just hope that, you know, DeFi will not have, for example, like Uniswap, people are talking about having KYC. I don't know what you think, Julien, but they're they're talking about uh, implying KYC or you know all these different type of procedures which yeah. could you know cut out you know a big part of the world which is which I think, would be unfortunate. Yeah, I, I think that um, I think regulation is coming. I mean, like coming, it's already there, but they they are uh, uh, muscle like getting their the muscle uh, a little bit bigger on the on the, on the public space. But uh, the the plan of all those different protocols is to be uh, fully decentralized. So I think the protocol, you cannot change it. You cannot really stop it. If the protocol is fully decentralized and fully autonomous, then it's impossible. Even if the biggest, most powerful country in the world wants to shut down the protocol, they cannot do that. But they can always limit it and censor people to use it. What's coming, I think, is where you will find a lot of different UI, a lot of different, different user interface that will be plugged into those different protocols and will offer access to the user database because they are made, like for example, they are regulated in the search in a, in a different country, so they can offer access to, for example, Uniswap or whatever. But yeah, I think like the space will, is maturing really fast, and the way that we've been using DeFi will completely change in the next uh, coming uh, coming months. But it's, it's fascinating, and that's what uh, we uh, we also partner with because we want to. Uh, get bigger together and try to make sure that we capture as much as possible market shares. And with those market shares and those people that we, we, we're getting on board as a, as a one family, then we can build bigger things and we can make sure that we are uh, also pulling up to the regulation. We are basically helping each other to, uh, to make, uh, yeah, to basically provide this vision to people that we've been talking about for, 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 for years. Just to piggyback on what Julian is saying, he said something which is really important and I want to highlight that. It's the fact that you can't shut down DeFi, right? So if they go exactly. on one of these yeah. decentralized exchanges, if they have a CEO, 
they could possibly slow things down, you know, if the people are visible to the public, if they're not uh, anonymous. And there could be issues with KYC. But if you guys look back at history, if you look at what we, we used to have with actually still have now with BitTorrents, right? What happens with BitTorrents is if they find, for example, you know, most of the servers in Hungary or in Poland and they go and crack down on the servers, you know, within a day or two, the servers are being installed in another country, right? Uh, in yeah, Romania, exactly. let's say, for instance. And this is, I mean, DeFi is even more difficult to stop because BitTorrent is not open source, right? As, as Julien was saying, you know, with DeFi, it's even more complicated. So if they crack down on Uniswap, let's say they impose KYC because they know some of the people behind it and they twist the arm of some players in DeFi, you know, because it's open source, it's so easy to fork a deck. So it's going to be, you know, a, a cat uh, mouse race uh, and they'll never be able to oh, yeah. fully shut it down. So yeah, they'll, I think they'll realize that further down the line. I mean, for example, like in Curve DAO, the entire protocol is fully decentralized. Even that when the team we want to make a modification, we need like the code has to go and pass the voting, which is owned by people uh, with the tokens. So it, it Curve is probably the the, the the biggest protocol, decentralized protocol on the space right now. And my point is. Yeah, it's fully autonomous, and if someone wanted to shut it down for, for different reasons, it would be impossible. So it's, it's interesting, but at the same time, you also want to provide and make sure you're, you conform and you respect regulation because it's also very important. Uh, but regulation has to come to the point that realize that what we're building, it's actually more benefits, beneficial for the people. And if any government... They are getting elected and paid by the people to get elected. They should actually go that path because it's providing more value. You basically remove the old kind of lobbying mafia financial uh, thing that was not providing much value to the people, but taking much of the money. Right now, what we're doing is like we're giving them the tool, the tool that was used to be built for traditional financial uh, voice, but they were only keeping the information and the technology for themselves. But here, what we're doing is that we're providing the technology to everyone. That's, that's the beauty of it. We provide the tech, we build the tech, and you guys, Swissball, you provide it to the people down the line. Yeah, it's amazing. You can just see the, the power going to, to the people in the chat. They're um, very excited about this. I, I can see a lot of really positive stuff about, you know, this is, this is the future and we shouldn't adapt to the old world, but create a new world where... Um, it's a, it's hopefully a better future. It's not going to be easy to get there. But just um, stepping away from the higher, uh, longer term time frame, we're getting some questions about what we can expect in the in the short to medium term for how State DAO and Swissborg might collab, and perhaps we can start with the NFTs and and their powers, and then go into some some other services or products that we can we can expect from the user side. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned before, uh, obviously for us, like the end, we see like uh, uh, a massive potential for NFTs. Not NFTs in a in a in a very like uh, what we've seen so far in a in a in a DeFi space, but more like very really advanced NFT products, like uh, things that you can uh, basically use with the NFT to unlock or have access to better uh, better yield or boost your uh, API or stuff like that. Or actually also. Get up in a leaderboard. For example, like in Swissboard, you have this kind of like different chair, chair one, chair two, chair three, or like a different way of like being premium. This is also something that you could potentially do with NFTs, uh, special powers. And then on 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 uh, on Stake DAO, we could also see like maybe as a user of Swissboard, you could also use like specific products or get VIP access to Stake DAO. Um, and for me, what I'm really looking for in the near future or short term short term plan is how we can bring more traditional financial products that uh, try to, I mean, my background is quant, so I used to build like uh, some algorithmic trading and all the different things in the, in the traditional world. But how can we bring this to retail in a very simple way, a very simple uh, tool where people can actually use without necessarily understanding the, the technology behind it? So, like, we're talking about derivatives, we're talking about options, we're talking about futures, all those things. Obviously, like, regulation. Uh, needs to be really get it, regulated in a correct way, but so more advanced uh, structure, more advanced uh, strategies, like on Euro's table, for example, that we want to focus on this one, on this point as well. So how we can bring those very advanced strategies for people to use, and plus plug some very advanced traditional financial products, such as hedging, leveraging, on top of it, so then it's, it's super beneficial for users. 
down the line. Yeah, amazing. And um, now we're going to go into another another spicy question. So, so Alex, the Swissborg app is is mainly centered around you know offering different tokens and ease of access, but um, with with regards to opening the doors to DeFi, when can we when can we expect to see Stake DAO on the on the app? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> tonight, tonight. Yeah, no? Julia, Julia think, has been uh, uh, Julia has been sending me death threats, you know, in the past week. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But uh, so the only issue that we have at Swissborg is because we don't own an order book, right? We're an aggregator, just like Skyscanner, Hotels.com, right? That tries to facilitate the best possible deals. For us to list SDT, it would we would need to have SDT listed on HitBTC, possibly Bitfinex, Binance, Kraken, or LMAX, right? One of the exchanges that we aggregate from. So that would be the first step, right? And then obviously there's an ERC-20 version. So for actual Fireblocks integration or custody integration, that is not a big deal, right? But that would be the ultimate first step is to for SDT to get listed on more centralized exchanges, or eventually, if we go down that route we were talking about earlier about integrating Uniswap or, or some sort of DEX, then that would make life easier. But it's not in the next next month to come. So and that would be the, the first optical. <laughs> yeah, that was a, it was a hot question. I think you, you, you answered that well with transparency. So I'm sure everyone can appreciate that. Um, uh, I guess uh, one of the more cerebral questions is around DAOs and, and how to steer the development process. Of course, Stake DAO has a governance token, which is used to, to shape the future. And, and naturally, DAOs uh, uh, have some organizational processes which are very different to the traditional world. Um, so, uh, I mean, without even the, the integration, how do you see the, the roadmap or the developmental process shape First, with the traditional ways of working that you have with Swissborg and, and perhaps Binance or Kraken, and and the lessons that could be useful for this new future that we're looking towards. That's a really good question. So, what are the lessons learned? There are so many, right? If I had to make a list, it would probably be longer than the Bible. But um, yeah, I mean, for us, it's just like really understanding where you want to contribute, right? Like DeFi. Some of the biggest DeFi platforms don't have more than 20, 25 people on the team, right? So because you don't need the regulatory, you don't need the legal teams, and you don't have to jump through as many hoops as we did. So sometimes I'm kind of wondering, like, oh, should we have stayed DeFi, you know, to stay lean, be able to pivot and get, you know, all, always on top of the most advanced and cool technologies? But uh, I guess, you know, we chose a little bit of a different route, which, which I believe is great as well, right? I mean, mass adoption, if we really want to cross the chasm, and uh, offers something that everyone can be a part of this, you know, beautiful future that we have. Then we went down this mm -hmm. this route. Mm -hmm. But I, I think one one of the if for other entrepreneurs who are watching out there, one of the best um, books that I've ever read read when it comes to building a business and really understanding market positioning and competitive analysis is a book called The Blue Ocean Strategy. Which, you know, I think a lot of the biggest mistakes that were made in crypto is number one with exchanges, they tried to move too fast, right? They saw a lot of money and it's that is kind of like a tortoise in the hare type scenario where, where the rabbit will eventually, you know, lose the race. You know, you have to always mm -hmm. think about long term sustainable. So all decisions really have to look long run, right? Because it could impact never take shortcuts never go too fast is one of them. Because at Swissport, it took us two years and a half to build the infrastructure behind the app, but we have a very solid infrastructure, right? And, you know, while many exchanges, their order books crash, we're almost always live and it will just get better, right? We're, we're working with professors at Polytechnique to help with scalability. And so always, you know, think long-term, build an infrastructure that's solid, that's scalable uh, and not go too, too fast is, is one of the key ones, I'd say. And then the second one is really the community, man, like this community, you can see here in the Stake Dio chat, and by the way, shout out to, uh, to Evos as well, Belgium, he's an amazing guy. If we work hand in hand with the community and really try to do something with them and get them involved and show them that everything we're doing is the love for the community, then that, that resonates, man. That's a narrative. That's a beautiful story. We're aligned in terms of principles and values. It's not just tech, man. It's not just geekiness. 
there's a story, there's a purpose behind what we're doing, you know, at Swiss Fork. We never sold equity, man. Like there are very few companies in the crypto space that can say that they never sold equity. We just did an ICO. We've been sustainable since. We're profitable. We're profitable in our month on month and our eighth month after launching the app. And really, it's it's the story that, you know, some people even call us like a cult or a sect, <laughs> which is which is funny. Right. But it's it's really we love each other. And and we are not a we're not a military. We're not an army, as some people like to call themselves or Marines or whatever. We're just one family. And we really do this from our heart. And I think that's even more powerful than, you know, offering the best technology or best execution is the community and the story behind it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with you there. I think we had um, we have a quite a strong community through the herd, which is the the nickname. But I think there's definitely some lessons to be learned with the way that Swissborg have done things as well. I mean, as a DAO, you know, there is no difference between the contributors and the community. Ideally, you would have execution tied very closely to the the wider governance that exists within within state DAO or even in, in Swissborg with. With the with the power that you guys have to shape the product that is built, you know we've had some we've had some really really good questions, and now a lot of people are asking about how they can get involved and how to support this new uh, marriage, so to speak, of of Stake Down and Swissborg. So maybe we could just have two minutes about how how people can get involved. You know, if they if they want to help out on the community side, code side, whatever it is, how can they put their hands up and be heard? Yeah, I can maybe jump into it. I mean. I think like getting in uh, both uh, uh, channels of of of, of the uh, project. So Discord, uh, we also have a Telegram, uh, we also have like a Twitter account. But getting on Discord uh, uh, is probably the easiest way uh, to to get involved in the project. But uh, I just wanted, uh, as uh, Alex mentioned, it's uh, it's not a cartel. It's 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 a, it's a family. We accept anyone, and we're just building for. Basically, anyone that is sharing the same vision as us, then we want to embrace them. We don't like to basically partner with them. We just want to, uh, yeah, it's our enemies are not inside DeFi. They are like more outside, more in traditional, uh, in traditional way. So it's important that uh, they can just join us on the Telegram group. They can just ping us and we'll be more than welcome to help them and to basically see. It can be like different things. It can be like marketing, it can be business, it can be development, it can be like programmers. Anyone that basically want to get involved, we want them to join. And especially on this new partnership, maybe we can do it's also something like maybe we can do like an arts contest that we've done before, or we can and people will be will be going nuts with that, and that's it will be really great. And um, yeah, maybe let's do that actually as a first step art uh, contest. And then on the other side is like maybe if you guys are thinking about how we could bring more products from Stake Down into Swissborg, and then vice versa, how we can basically bring the experience and the thing that you really like in Swissborg to basically make a direct integration into Stake Down. So you guys, when you go to Stake Down, you also like. Uh, uh, products from Swissbolt, all the different things we can basically do, like just brainstorming, uh, write your message inside Discord, write your message inside uh, Telegram, provide some ideas, and if you want to jump in, you feel for, feel free to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And on our side, it is be, uh, we have the Swissport DAO. Some of the guys are here as well. They're contributing to help us in any type or form. Obviously, Discord. Uh, there are many different type of groups. So, um, you know, we're always welcoming new community members who want to support us in some way or fashion. And uh, we welcome you with uh, big, warm arms. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, amazing to hear. So, yeah, I mean, if there's uh, if there's no closing thoughts, I think, you know, we're, we've, had a, we've had a really enlightening chat. Lots of lots of alpha dropped. I think hopefully some of the community's questions answered as well. And you know, this isn't the the only opportunity. So, if you didn't get a chance to ask your question, you know, uh, watch this space. We can we can possibly do this again, maybe next month or in the in the coming weeks. And yeah, please do you know reach out on all of the social channels. I think they're, they're in the chat if you want to get involved. Likewise for for Swissborg, and uh, let's see let's see the beautiful future grow. Thank, yeah. Thanks so much, guys, for for having me, and also a big thank you to the Swissborg family out there. Love you guys and uh, look forward to, to working with each other, hopefully uh, very, very soon with some sort of BTC, smart yield optimization and other cool things. Stay tuned, everybody. Yeah. Uh, thank you guys uh, for, for having me. And um, If you guys have any more questions, like please ask them into the, the channel, like uh, Twitter or whatever. I just want to reiterate that at Stake DAO, for us, we, we put this partnership to the higher level because uh, we share the same value in both teams. And also now after the 
past few months since we've been working together it's like it's it's become more than a close family so i think yeah i think we'll be building some amazing products and yeah it's just the beginning so stay tuned a lot of things are coming and uh, we'll try to make you happy and uh yeah i'm uh, i'm also and now the take down team is also we are uh, swiss ball so we should probably also create the Hashtag we are uh, staked out and create uh, some uh, hot uh, contest on this one. <laughs> I'm, really looking, I'm really looking forward to get this one. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, absolutely. Let's leverage the communities. Okay, guys. Thank you so much cool. for joining us. Thank and, you so uh, much, guys. See you, see you next time. Thanks for your time. Take care. It's been a pleasure. Peace, guys. Thanks so much.